Once upon a time, Afro-Germans, also known as Black Germans, lived in the heart of Germany. In the 18th century, Afro-Germans became a part of German society and became citizens of the European country. For them, Germany was just exactly the same country as it was for other races. However, Afro-Germans' roots trace back to sub-Saharan Africa. Back then, if you wandered through Germany, you would come across black communities scattered about the entire country. But as the years rolled on, something changed. In some places, their numbers grew smaller, and in certain areas, it became rare to find an Afro-German. This was the result of a series of events that structurally and systematically wiped the Afro-Germans from Germany. But let's first understand how Afro-Germans lived in Germany in the 17th and 18th centuries. Imagine the 17th century, where a significant part of the Afro-German story begins. In 1682, Frederick William founded what was called the Brandenburg African Compartment, and even set up a fort in what is now Ghana. This fort, Gross Friedrichsburg, was a hub for the German slave trade. Ships like the Friedrich III sailed the seas, carrying thousands of African slaves. As destiny would have it, some of these African slaves ended up in the Virgin Islands, particularly at the famous St. Thomas Slave Market, the biggest in the world at the time. These Africans were brought to German estates, primarily on the Gold Coast, which is Ghana today. A tragic story unfolds here. Twelve African boys were brought over, and six of them were even adorned with golden chains and presented to a king. Later, these young souls were bought by their new owners and taken to places like Potsdam in Berlin. Later, the influx of thousands of African slaves built a strong presence of Afro-Germans in Germany. First, they lived as slaves, but as time went on, Germany changed its laws and offered freedom to the African slaves. Now these slaves could start their families and live like Germans. Their children would be exactly the same Germans as the children of their once masters. Before World War I, Germany was a home for thousands of black people from all corners of the world, Africa, North and South America, and the Caribbean. Yes, not only the generations of African slaves were living, but more Africans were accepting Germany as their new home. But when the war erupted in 1914, International travel and migration came to a grinding halt. Germany imposed strict rules on migration, leaving some people to stay while others left before the war's outbreak. After the war ended, those who remained in Germany faced an unexpected problem. They couldn't leave because they lacked the necessary travel documents. But perhaps the darkest chapter in the Afro-German story unfolded during the Nazi regime. This was when the Afro-German population faced extreme challenges. The Nazis had a belief in racial purity, and they didn't want anyone of African descent to mix with the native German population. They had beliefs that if this happened, their German race, which they considered most superior of all, would be impured. They implemented harsh laws and persecuted Afro-Germans. Many endured forced sterilization, and some even became victims of horrifying medical experiments. It was a dark chapter in black history. Since Adolf Hitler was holding the reins of the Nazi party, he imposed extreme nationalism, racism, and the idea that they should have total control over everything. Their grand dark plan was to create a country where they ruled with an iron fist, and they were willing to do terrible things to make it happen. Before the Nazis came along, Germany was home to all races and ethnicities, including the black population. But when the Nazis took control, life got really tough for the black population, which is often ignored. There is no doubt that Hitler was obsessed with murdering all Jews in Europe, but it should be also known that his grand mission was to clean Germany of all other races. Out of them, the black population was already seen with contempt in Europe, even if slavery and the slave trade had been banned. Centuries of slavery had indoctrinated Europeans to think black population as less than humans. The Nazis believed in something called Aryan supremacy. They thought that only people they considered Aryan were good enough, and they wanted to make Germany pure by their twisted standards. Sadly, anyone who wasn't Aryan, like Jews, Roma, Sinti, homosexuals, disabled folks, and people of African descent, faced havoc. As time went on, the Nazis made some inhuman strict rules. These rules landed the majority of black people in prisons, hospitals, psychiatric facilities, and even concentration camps. The black population of Germany was being chased, haunted, and murdered. During World War II, many Afro-Germans were forced to join the German military. It's because either they could join the Nazi forces or accept to go against them and witness the worst form of cruelty. Those who fought on the front lines had an even harder time. 
especially on the Eastern Front, they were treated inhumanely by their fellow soldiers and were considered slaves. A majority of the population, especially men, chose to join the military to avoid getting killed. However, they did not know that they were being used as an instrument in the war and that they would lose their life fighting. Since most of the fittest black men died in the war, fewer were left and eventually the population started to decline. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. In 1935, the Nazis made some laws called the Nuremberg Race Laws. At first, these laws were aimed at Jews, but later they affected black and Roma people too. One of these laws said that if you were not considered Aryan, you couldn't have political rights in Germany. The other law was all about protecting what the Nazis called German blood and honor. It banned people from different races from getting married or having relationships, and it was especially targeting black individuals. These laws made it nearly impossible for black people in Germany to get married and start families. Even though the rules were harsh, some brave couples from different backgrounds risked everything to be together. But this put them in danger, and white German women were even pushed to divorce their black husbands to keep what the Nazis saw as racial purity. Afro-Germans had to bear the hurtful nickname Rhineland Bastards, a disrespectful and mean term for people of mixed race backgrounds. The Nazis' hatred didn't stop there. They even compared some native tribes to animals and said they needed to be wiped out. Black children had a really tough time too. They were kept out of school and faced mean comments from other kids. They felt lonely and left out, even though they just wanted to be part of the German community. Things got even worse when the Nazis took over education and officially banned black students from schools. But Nazis did not want just to limit the black population. They wanted to wipe them out, however, systematically. That's when they used a dark, inhumane strategy aimed at gradually reducing the black population and eventually wiping it away in Germany. This was done by forced sterilization. The Nazis were fanatical about preventing what they called race mixing so they forcibly sterilized black men because they perceived them as a threat to the purity of the Aryan race. This horrifying procedure left these men unable to have children even if they got married. Yet there was no limit to the wickedness of the Nazis. In 1933, they introduced a law known as the Law for the Prevention of Offspring with Hereditary Diseases. Initially designed to prevent the spread of certain illnesses, it was perverted to target those who did not align with the Nazis' warped vision of racial purity. During this period, approximately 400,000 people were forcibly sterilized. Most of them were black, and the excuse used was to prevent the hereditary diseases from passing on to the next generations. For instance, there was Ferdinand Allen, born to a black British father and a white German mother. He suffered from a skin condition and was forcibly sterilized by a court order on May 15, 1941. Tragically, Allen met his end at the hands of the Nazis as part of their T4 program. The T4 program, also known as the Euthanasia program, was a Nazi policy that involved ending people's life to end their suffering. Some people might be going through suffering due to their mental and physical diseases, and ending their lives is perhaps the best medical decision to end their suffering but the Nazis used them to kill people. It targeted groups deemed unworthy of life, including Afro-Germans. The T4 program played a significant role in the decline of Afro-Germans because it allowed for the forced sterilization and murder of those considered racially inferior. Another significant law during this dark period was the Law for the Restoration of the Professional Civil Service, enacted in April 1933. This law aimed to purge Jews and others considered politically unreliable from government positions. This included teaching roles in schools and universities, administrative positions, and various civil service roles. The definition of Jews under this law included anyone with at least one Jewish grandparent. It also targeted political dissidents, homosexuals, and others deemed undesirable by the Nazi regime. People of African descent were particularly affected because only citizens could become civil servants. Naturalized Afro-Germans lost their passports and working conditions became especially harsh, particularly in prominent industries like music and movies. Unfortunately, many Germans embraced this ideology and openly discriminated against black people. All these rules and laws created by the Nazis played a significant role in diminishing and erasing people of African descent from Germany. However, it's crucial to note that in later years, 
Afro-Germans fought for their rights using various methods. They engaged in protests and demonstrations to demand their rights and challenge racial discrimination. For instance, the black community in Germany organized protests against discriminatory laws and practices, such as the ban on interracial marriage in the 1920s and 1930s. In addition to protests, they practice civil disobedience by refusing to comply with discriminatory laws or regulations. Ida Michael, a black German, notably refused to comply with the Nazi policy of racial segregation in public transportation during World War II. Afro-Germans also turned to legal action to challenge discriminatory practices and laws. In the 1950s and 1960s, some Afro-Germans successfully challenged the German government's refusal to grant them citizenship rights. Tragically, some African Germans who fought for their rights were killed for their activism. Amadou Antonio Kweku, an activist, met a tragic end at the hands of neo-Nazis in 1992. His death sparked widespread outrage and led to the creation of the Amadeu Antonio Foundation, dedicated to combating racism and xenophobia in Germany. Now it becomes clear that once, hundreds of thousands of Afro-Germans lived in Germany, which was reduced to a few thousand during the Nazi era. Since then, even after things normalized, Afro-Germans did not reach the population they once had in Germany. Did you know that Germany once had native Afro-Germans? They were German citizens and Germany was their country, even if their roots were in Africa. Do you think that the way Germany got rid of its black population is actually racial cleansing? Let us know your thoughts on that in the comments section right below. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.